I was very happy to be a stand-up and to continue doing it. That's all I wanted to do. And I remember being called back to Dublin. I had to go over one morning. Like it was a very exciting time. You know, at eleven o'clock in the morning, I had to fly over to Dublin. Met Dermot Morgan. We had to read together to see where we compatible. And then I had to fly back to Edinburgh that night to do my show. You know, so it was all a very exciting time. And I got the part, and it, it was absolutely exhilarating to do something like that for the first time ever. Um, it was just great. You know? Had Dermot Morgan already been cast as Father Ted? I think he'd been cast. As, as he? And yeah, had, he'd been yeah, cast. at that stage. Yeah. And and you were from? Do you know Dermot personally? No, I'd met him maybe once or twice, just on 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 maybe uh, in a radio studio or something. Yeah. You know. Um, but even though, even though you weren't allowed to watch television, did you, had you seen him? Ah, yeah. Well, I'd seen his characters on the Late Late Show. You know, Father Trendy and and and, and sort of the other stuff. And I'd seen. Um, you know, the stuff in the live mic and all that. And I, I certainly admired him um, when I was growing up. I thought, like, yes, he's one of Ireland's only comedians. And, you know, I thought, fair play to him. I mean, funny enough, I didn't really appreciate the scraps out of this stuff later on because, you know, that just wasn't my cup of tea, that type of political satire uh, at all. Mm. I prefer a much sort of a more profound, deeper satire, you know, more about human behaviour in general. Um, and then when the two of you started working together, so, so here, here we had a new uh, series that... I mean, although you, as you say, the scripts were brilliant and all mm. of that kind, of, there were, there was going to be a risk involved. Will <laughs> will uh, a comedy series mm. about three priests, Irish oh, priests on an island of will it work? Will it fly? We're not known nationally, although you were known on the circuit, mm. and all of that. Um, and then and and also there was the other dimension to it, which was that neither yourself nor Dermot were actors per se, whereas Frank Kelly was an actor. So how did that work out? Uh, well, you know, it was like extremely risky and, you know, obviously we're quite grateful to Channel 4 and, and particularly a guy called Jeffrey Perkins, who was the producer, who produced an awful lot of the great comedy uh, of the 80s and, and early 90s. You know, he, he did Harry Enfield and Saturday Night Live and all these things. So he had a great track record. So he kind of knew what he was doing and we had to trust his instincts and Channel 4 had to go, go along with it because we were totally untried. Nobody knew how we were going to perform. Um... But, you know, I think, I think it worked. I, like, when I heard the, the idea first about Three Priests, I thought, oh, God, this is the type of thing I tried to get away from here. You know, exactly. everyone in Ireland, like, I thought they were a comedian, put a collar on them and, you know, did a, mm. a spiel. Uh, but, you know, you, you had to appreciate the spirit it was written in and, and you know, it, was, it, was, it, it could have been three firemen or three bakers. It just yeah. happened to be three priests. And, and how did the three of you get on? We got, on mean, we got on very well. I mean, Frank obviously came from a more uh, theatrical type of background. And... Uh, you know, that took a bit of getting used to, certainly. And, like, actors would come in from time to time. Yeah. Uh, because there's and always... How do, you mean, how do you mean it took a bit of getting used to? <laughs> from what point of view? did Was he wary of the two of you? Well, I think were we you were... too wary of him? What way did it well, work? Well, certainly when it came to the uh, the studio stuff. Like, we do a lot, lot of location stuff down in Clare, and it's very hard to know what's going on, because you're doing scenes from different shows all the time. You don't even know where you are half the time, and there's no audience there. Now, when it came to the live audience in London, on a Friday night... Very exciting time, big audience in, three or four hundred people, and we record the show as live in front of them and drop in the bits from location. And myself and Dermot took to that like ducks to water. That was that was our <laughs> this was your metier, this, this so was, to this speak. Was yeah, brilliant. we were we had a great laugh with the audience. You know, uh, we 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 deliberately mess up on purpose almost. You know, to get, do it to again, get cheap laughs out of the audience, <laughs> and we do it again, and we might change it a slight little bit or whatever the second time. But it was great feeding off the audience. You know, for the first time in the week, you know the lines that you were rehearsing the debt during the week were suddenly getting these big laughs. Whereas some of the actors would come into this environment and would find it quite difficult, you know, because uh, they weren't used to this sort of, like, hairy, hair live situation really that much. I, you know, they've done theatre, but it's much more... Well, it's so uh, well rehearsed and it, refined. It is, and, and there's and nothing it, unpredictable about yeah, it, really, more, is there? Yeah, it's a bit more staid as well. And you would find from time to time the actors would come in, you know, a lot of whom... Like, at that time, I had no respect for actors. I couldn't understand why people were actors. I couldn't understand the motivation for, like, you know, just doing a different part every night. This uh, endless humiliation of, of going for castings. I couldn't understand it. I really didn't know where they were coming from. But then, you know, you appreciate their technique and, you, you know, it's good fun to work with them from time to time and meet people from different backgrounds. But they would come in and they would be looking for motivation. And you'd be just saying, oh, you're <laughs> stupid, just... Motivation? You just have to take off your pants, for God's sake, and, and you know, make a silly face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I think, I think the great thing from myself and Dermot's point of view was we were using our comic instincts. We weren't uh, method actors. We weren't going off, you know, yeah. whatever. I mean, but at the same time, like, I think uh, there's something in everybody who, who, who's been exposed to comedy over the years or literature or movies or theatre or whatever. You know, you do absorb an awful lot of information. And I, when I look at myself doing that now, I see loads of influences straight off. You know, Laurel, Laurel and Hardy, you know, uh, Faulty Towers, you know, the Manuel kind of thing, you yeah. know, which I would never have studied or, or aped in any way. But, you know, you do see where it's coming from. Sure. You know?
And actually, it's hard on Dermot. Dermot has a very straight role he as has Father really, Ted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a very funny man, Dermot. But he's a but very complex character compared to, you know, the, the Dougal and the Jack and the Mrs. Doyle characters. Yeah. We're, we're cartoon characters. We're, we're two, right. two-dimensional, whereas Dermot is a fully rounded, three-dimensional, you know, uh, I think he's a great comic creation, actually. Yeah. I think Dermot brings an awful lot to it. Yeah. And I think he, he surprised himself with his ability to, to you know, play it a bit more straight than... than uh, we're going to have a little clip now from Father Ted. This is from entertaining Father Stone from the first series. God, I hate hospitals. Do you ever notice it's usually sick people who end up in hospitals? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. They all come here, Ted. Of course, you're a goner the minute you walk in through the door. You know, I prefer to take my chances in the real world, Ted. You know, no matter how sick I was, I'd never go under the hammer. Under the knife, Dougal. <laughs> under the hammer's auctioneering. All right, yeah. Do you remember that film, Ted, where your man has his head transplanted onto a fly and uh, the fly's head is transplanted onto the man? Oh, yes. What was that called? Out of Africa, I think. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, it's all low-key, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Not trying to be funny. Not really, no. I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes I find, you know, I'm, I'm doing my stand-up show and I think a lot of the audience come along um, sort of expecting to see more of Father Dougal there but what they don't understand or, or, or what they don't refuse to understand is that you, you can't have Dougal without Ted you know it's, it's, a, it's a symbiotic thing you know yeah. uh, and, you know you need the costumes and you need the whole context it's impossible to ever you know do that live yeah. transfer to, to the live stage and that was Dougal there, Ardell O'Hanlon on the programme The Art Show with Mike Murphy. Interesting to hear him note uh, that people that attend his live performances get a little bit disappointed when they don't see Dougal and him saying that he can't do it with Father Ted because I actually overheard a conversation a couple of days ago from a number of people who had seen him and were disappointed that he hadn't uh, carried out his role as Dougal in the stand-up situation. But there you go, there's the answer to that one. And uh, an enjoyable piece from the art show following on from Chris Teakin.